Hello everyone and welcome to Daily Dose of Spiritual Vitamin. Here with me Bible please. Now for the spiritual vitamin today, the Spirit has laid on my heart to teach about something that personally affects me as well as everyone else, I believe. Otherwise, I don't believe the Spirit would have given it to me to teach. The subject matter is about giving your word to God and then trusting him to do what he said he's going to do. So the story that the Lord gave me pertaining to this was an old story. It was the story of Isaac being the sacrifice and how he became the sacrifice for Abraham. But as I'm reading the story, it's giving me more details that the regular and traditional Bible don't give you. So for today's vitamin, we are going to go over the story of Abraham and Isaac and the sacrifice of Isaac and how he became the sacrifice and what was actually going on and taking place. Those of us that know the story from the traditional Bible know that Abraham, um, God told Abraham to take Isaac to the altar and sacrifice him. That's base that's the that's the that's the short scenario of the story. But the story I'm about to tell you is one that has more detail. It gives you we're gonna go into greater understanding of this whole situation and what actually took place and how this applies to us. So we're gonna study the word of God according to the book of Jasher. From the book of Enoch, Jubilees, and Jasher. We're going to get the word according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. As to what actually happened. During that whole situation. And how it even took place. So right now. We're going to go into story time. And we're going to go into story time. About two characters. One named Ishmael and one named Isaac. And then I want you to pay attention to the supporting cast of characters and watch how God moved in the situation and God's role in this whole scenario. So, right now, we're going to begin our story. It takes place in the 22nd chapter in the book of Joshua. And it begins with the 44th scripture. So we're going to go into the book of Jasher, starting with scripture number 44. And then we're going to proceed forward, okay? If you'll join me. As the Lord liveth, the God of my father Abraham, if the Lord should say unto my father, Take now thy son Isaac, Let's go back a little further. 
Let's go back to the 42nd verse and get the, the four running. Okay? Chapter 41 so you can see this age and understand that these were not babies. When Isaac was 37 years old, Ishmael, his brother, was going about with him in the tent. So Ishmael and Isaac are in their 30s at this time. And Ishmael boasted of himself to Isaac. So Ishmael and Isaac are having a conversation. And Ishmael says, I was 13 years old when the Lord spoke to my father to circumcise us. And I did according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to my father. Now Ishmael is 37 years old, talking about when he was 13. And I gave my soul unto the Lord, and I did not transgress his word, which he, circum which he commanded my father. So at 37 years of age, Ishmael, is talking to Isaac, who was 37. Ishmael was older. Okay? Ishmael was older. And he's telling Isaac, when I was 13, God told Dad to circumcise me. And I haven't committed any transgressions against the Lord since I was circumcised when I, got, when I was 13. Okay? And then Isaac answered Ishmael, saying, Why dost thou boast to me about this? About a little bit of flesh which thou didst take from thy body concerning which the Lord commanded thee? So why are you boasting to me? Because you got circumcised. That's what Isaac said to Ishmael. That's Ishmael is boasting about being 13 and getting circumcised. As the Lord liveth, the God of my father Abraham, if the Lord should say unto my father, so Abraham, Isaac is now bragging to Ishmael about if God tells dad, take now thy son Isaac and bring him up an offering before me. I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. Stop right there for a second. Isaac is now saying to Ishmael. Now God is sitting high. He's looking low. And Ishmael is bragging about how, you know, God told Dad to cut my foreskin when I was 13. And Dad did it. And Isaac responds back, yeah, well... Now Isaac is 37 years old. And he says back to his brother, Yeah, well, what you what you bragging for? God told him to do it. You did something that God told you to do. Okay. If God was to tell Dad to kill me today, I would gladly go and give my life. Because God called me to give it. So Isaac is old enough to brag about being a willing sacrifice before God to his brother Ishmael, proving his loyalty to God. And God is listening. 
And the Lord heard the word that Isaac spoke to Ishmael. And it seemed good in the sight of the Lord. Which means God heard him. God said, okay. And he thought to try Abraham in this manner. So he's going to allow the words that Isaac cast into the universe to manifest into reality. Meaning, you want it to be a sacrifice. I'm going to see what you did now. I'm going to put you to the fire. I'm going to test you. See, this was a test now. Because he began to brag. He began to speak about, you know, in his own power. Now God wants to see where his heart is. So now God says, okay. That sounds like a good plan. And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came. So be aware. That while Isaac is doing all this bragging, Satan is listening just like God. Satan hears just like God. And the day arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. So the sons of God are there and so is Satan. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Meaning, what you want? What you doing here? Why you coming here? And Satan answered the Lord and said, he has to tell the truth before God. So he says, I'm going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. So Satan is saying he's going to and fro. East, west, north, south. East, west, north, south. To and fro. He hitting all four corners. And the Lord said unto Satan, what is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? So he's asking Satan about not just the righteous and the elect, not just his servants. He said, what is thy word concerning all the children of the earth that you're going to and fro on? What is the word? And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee and remember thee when they are requiring from thee. So in other words, Satan is saying, Lord, I see them all out there praying and stuff. Asking you for stuff. They diligent why they ask. They all about seeking you, God. Why they ask. Now this is Satan talking to God. This is how Satan gets to try you. This is how that takes place. He says, I see them praying. And coming before you on the regular when they need something. He answered and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee and remember thee when they require anything from thee 
And when thou givest them the things which they require from thee, they sit in their ease. And they forsake thee. They remember thee no more. So Satan is saying. As soon as you get your blessings that God can gave you. Now you are sitting back in ease and comfort. Now God ain't no more part of your life. This is what Satan is saying to God. About you the believer. He says I see all of them. I see them out there praying. The believers and the non-believers. Because God reigns on the just and the unjust alike. He says, I see them. Holy rolling. When they need something from you. And then as soon as you give them what they ask for. They act like they don't know you. And when thou givest them the things which they require from thee, they sit in their ease and forsake thee. And they remember thee no more. Thou hast seen Abraham and his, the son of Terah, who had personal children. And he served thee and erected altars to thee, Whenever he came, he brought up offerings upon them. He proclaimed thy name continually to all the children of the earth. And now that his son Isaac is born to him, he's forsaken thee. That's Satan. So now he's using Isaac. But see how he cleverly listened to their conversation. I heard Isaac say, I would gladly give myself if God called me to be given. So Satan slithers in. Well, since you ask me, this is what I observe. So... You gave him Isaac. And since you gave him Isaac, you ain't got no more burnt offerings from him. You ain't heard another word from him. He's forsaken you, Lord. He's forsaken you. For amidst all that he has done, he brought the no offerings. Neither burnt offering nor peace offering. Nor ox, lamb, nor goat of all. He killed on the day that his son was weaned. Even from the time of his son's birth till now. Been 37 years. He built no altar before thee. Nor brought any offering to thee. For he saw that thou didst give him what he requested before thee. And therefore he forsook thee. And the Lord said to Satan. Has thou considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon the earth. Perfect man. On the upright before me. One that fear God and avoideth evil. As I live. Where I say unto him. Bring up Isaac thy son before me. He would not withhold him from me. Much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me. He would bring his flock with his herd. So see, God had confidence in who Isaac was. He knew Isaac had a track record of being faithful and loyal. 
He knew Isaac was true to him. He knew Isaac was not out there practicing evil. He knew Isaac always considered him. So yes, you can try my servant Isaac. You can try my servant Abraham. And I will call Abraham to bring me Isaac. And he will bring me Isaac. And he will be willing to sacrifice Isaac. Because Abraham trusts me. So Satan has slithered in and now asks God to try Abraham using Isaac as a sacrifice. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Speak now then to Isaac, to Abraham, as thou hast said, and thou will see that he will not this day transgress and cast aside thy works. At that time, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, he said, Here I am. And he said unto him, Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which be, shall be shown to thee. For there will thou see a cloud in the glory of the Lord. And Abraham said within himself, How shall I separate my, separate my son Isaac from Sarah his mother, in order to bring him up for a burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham came into the tent and sat before Sarah his wife and spoke these words to her. My son Isaac is grown up and he has not for some time studied the service of his God. Now tomorrow I will go and bring him to, to Shem and Abner his son. And there he will learn the ways of the Lord for they will teach him to know the Lord as well as to know that when he prayeth continually before the Lord, he will answer him. Therefore, there he will know the way of the serving of the Lord his God. So he is now going to talk to his adult son to make him aware that he's going to have to be sacrificed. And in doing this, he's going to educate the children. <coughs> Excuse me. He had educated sons, Shem and Abner. Okay? About serving God. And Sarah said, Thou hast spoken well. Go, my Lord, or my husband, and do unto him as thou hast said. But remove him not at a great distance from me. Neither let him remain there too long. For my soul is bound within his soul. And Abraham said unto Sarah, My daughter, let us pray to the Lord our God, that he may do good with us. And Sarah took her son Isaac, and he abode all that night with her and she kissed him and embraced him and gave him instruction till morning and she said to him O oh my son how can my soul separate itself from thee and she still kissed him and embraced him and she gave Abraham instructions concerning him and Sarah said to Abraham O oh my Lord I pray thee take Heed of thy son, and place thine eye ever over him, for I have no other son nor daughter but him. O oh, forsake him not. If he be hungry, give him bread. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Do not let him go on foot, neither sit in the sun. Neither let him go by himself in the road. 
neither force him from wherever he may desire, but do unto him as he may say to thee. And Sarah wept bitterly the whole night on account of Isaac. And she gave him instructions till morning. And in the morning Sarah selected a very fine and beautiful garment from those which she had in the house that Ambalek had given to her. She dressed Isaac her son forthwith and she put a turban upon his head. And she enclosed a precious stone on the top of the turban, and she gave him a provision for the road. And they went forth. Isaac went with his father Abraham, and some of their servants accompanied them to see them off to the road. And Sarah went out with them, and she accompanied them upon the road to see them off. And they said to her, Return to the tent. And when Sarah heard the word of her son Isaac, she wept bitterly. And Abraham, her husband, wept with her. And their son wept with them a great weeping. Also those who went with them wept greatly. And Sarah caught hold of her son Isaac, and she held on to him in her arms. And she embraced him, and continued to weep with him. And Sarah said, who knoweth if this day I shall never see thee again? And they still wept together, Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. Okay, I'm going to stop here. And we'll continue this on the story of Abraham and Isaac. Till the next time, that's your daily dose of Bonnie Bean.